Like this video goes out to the 40 people on social media. Winky face. Jane Hume, welcome to the program. So should the fuel excise cut come to an end this week or should it be continued? So that's the question. Let's start the waffle timer. The cost of living pressures Russia, Ukraine, three dollars per litre. They're still feeling it at the grocery checkout. They're still feeling it when they pay their power bills, and they're certainly feeling it when they pay their mortgages. But just to be clear on fuel, you support that temporary relief coming to an end. Well, that was our policy when we were in government. And you still, now still the hold Labor that government, position? now the Labor government have taken the same decision. That's their decision to make. What we want to see no, just is how the position, Labor though. government. That was our that was our policy. But is it you support it? It's still our, it was still our policy when we when we went to the election. We're not in government no, anymore, but, but, so it's their policy. No, but I'm asking what, what I, your view is though now. But you, my, you, well, you my view is that the government will make its decision. You have positions on other things like the age pension, for example. You've announced what the government should be doing there. So on this, on fuel, should it come to an end? Well, that was our policy. But now? It, and it is, it is our policy. It was our it policy. Well, we don't have policies. We're in opposition. Did she just say? We don't have policies. We're in opposition. We don't have policies. We're in opposition. We're there. It's that out loud. We're not in government. Well, you do. You have a policy on the age pension. What, what about fuel? It's not a policy that we can implement, even if we had a different position. Now it's up to Labor to make its decisions. And is it making the right one? It's making its decisions. The right one? It was our decision when we were in government. It's their decision when they're in government. But, but, uh, I'll move on. So after three minutes, we're still no closer to knowing whether or not Jane Hume believes the fuel excise should come to an end. She really did wedge herself there because she'd have to know that when they were in government, the coalition had no intention of ever extending the fuel tax excise cut beyond the initial six months. The legislation will be very clear. Um, this cut will end on the 28th of September. It will sunset at that time and it won't be uh, extended. It was a cash splash. Cannonball! The fuel excise cut was always a bet each way, with the coalition hoping it might buy enough votes to return them to government, and if not, serve as a ticking time bomb for the next government to have to deal with. Rather than expelling three minutes of verbal diarrhoea, she'd have been better served just answering the question. She could have just said something like, The coalition's policy was that the cut would end after six months and not be extended. That position hasn't changed. Or something. When asked whether she thought the government should be cutting or increasing spending, there was more of the same. So it should be cutting spending to tighten uh, fiscal policy as the Reserve Bank tightens monetary policy, is that what you're saying? Well, the Labor government came to government. So again, what are you saying they should do? Cut some of that spending? Well, when or we were in government... with some of that spending? When we were in government, we made sure that we managed expenditures and grew the economy. But now, at the I'm same asking time what should the government lowering do now? taxes. What should they do now? Well, that's up to the government. We're not in government. But this is we interesting because the one, the one idea you have put out there is more spending. We would be very keen to see any policy that the Labor government wants to put forward. So should they spend more or spend less? No, we would be very interested to see any policy that would manage the payment side of the budget that would also not put more pressure on ordinary Australians in this cost of living crisis. So we're very open-minded. We would like to be constructive with the government. Whatever policy they have, we would like to see. Sorry, I'm just trying to be clear here. As Shadow Finance Minister, heading into a budget, should the government be spending more or spending less? All right, but in general... In general... Spend more or less? This budget should be all about making sure that fiscal policy works in line with, with monetary policy. So spend less? Well, we would like to see managed spending from this budget, from this... From this managed labor. spending? Well, that's what we did when less we were in government. Is that less spending? I would like to see... Uh, a, a very cautious budget, and I'd like to see Labor reprioritise some of their spending commitments. The coalition government left the economy in good shape, left the budget in an improving position. Can we hear it again? The coalition government left the economy in good shape, left the budget in an improving position. It's not a lie. If you believe it. Just in case anyone was buying that, the reality is that Australian government debt has increased to levels not experienced since the 1950s. 
That damage was done under the Coalition's watch. So, as Jane Hume so eloquently outlined, in opposition, much like when they're in government, the Coalition have no policies. They stand for nothing. In the words of the former member for Kuyong, really a slogan and a billboard. They exist to critique without offering anything in return. It does beg the question, why give the opposition a regular national platform if they have nothing to offer and nothing to say? Samantha Madden provided this interesting take following the Hume interview. David, was that entirely... That was mean, that interview. Mean? Mean. Oh. That was... Well, it was just... I don't know. It was just... It was a little brutal, I thought. WTF? Mean? Brutal? What part of asking a politician a question and repeating the same question to try and elicit an answer is mean or brutal? It should be the damn standard. Shouldn't it be one of the key pillars of journalism to ask questions and get an answer? Now, just as I was pulling this video together and I was about to give David Spears some mad props for generally not letting Hume off the hook, this little hot mic moment popped up in my Twitter feed. Are we going to do a photo? Ah, uh, oh, terrific. Let's get a photo. Just for those lovely folks on social media. <laughs> My friends on here. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's horrible, horrible place. And I, after years of copying it, no, you just have to tell yourself there are hundreds of thousands watching and a few hundred this week. Yeah. So you just yeah. got to remember it's... We don't even have to. Mm. Okay, it's all it's anonymous accounts. It's probably like, mm. like you know, it's probably two. It's very bad. It's 40 yeah. people, it basically. 15 people, but there are... Yeah. Far more who are just yeah. loving our work. Yeah. Here sure. we go. Three, two, one. That was cute, Dave. Insiders does cop its fair share of criticism, and let's be honest, a lot of it's warranted. Particularly when the program appears to be just another platform for the murdocracy, rather than a product of our national broadcaster. Um, with the Liberal Party, though, you know, they always seem to be allowed this freedom to get away with things sometimes that the Labor Party wouldn't. Why do you think that is? The Murdoch media beast. That said, I don't have an issue with the opposition featuring on the program. Peter Dutton, welcome to the program. Thanks, David. If for no other reason, then it serves as a regular reminder of why the coalition ended up in opposition in the first place. There really is just nothing there. 